October 29, 2018. It was one day before Halloween, the day before I found out what I'd done. Honest to God, I wish I could forget what I came to know, but what I discovered must be shared. Perhaps it'd be a weight off of my back, the knowledge that I'm not the only one who knows. On October 29, 2018, I unearthed knowledge that people have been seeking all their lives. Possibly the biggest question of them all. I'm both terrified and saddened by what I know now. Most people would think if you discovered something so important you would be ecstatic, but this is different. To anyone who is reading this, you're probably curious. You probably want to know what question I've finally found the answer to. Well, I know what's after death. I took part in an experiment called the White Angel, TWA for short. TWA was a very secretive operation run by a group of scientists and doctors I believed worked for the government. They searched for people with low income and asked them to join their experiment for large amounts of cash. The only catch. We could lose our lives. I didn't care. I don't have much family as is and I really needed the money as I'd recently lost my job. So, I agreed to do as they said, and on October 29, 2018 I took part in their experiment. There were at least 20 other people taking part in the experiment. The plan was to have our heart stop then started back up a couple of minutes later. We would then describe what we experienced or felt. They walked me to a table. I lay down, and they stuck a needle into my arm pumping a strange black liquid into it. A couple of minutes later, everything started to fade to black. I soon departed from the world we know. When I woke up, I found I was standing in a place of fire and brimstone. I was so horrified, there were people around me naked walking towards a door made out of bones in front of me. I followed the crowd hesitantly. When I came closer to the door, I saw there was text located above it. It read, Lashiate Agni Speranza, Voi C.H. Intrate, a phrase I recognized clearly from my school days. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. I finally knew where I was. Hell. I accepted my fate walking through the gates only to find a city of the damned. A strange red liquid rained from the sky, one that burned my skin on contact and stained a deep crimson. Those around me seemed not to be bothered by it, seemingly used to the hellish substance. This liquid stained each and every one it touched, creating a melancholy army of wanderers with demonic red skin. I could hear screams from ahead. The sounds of so many poor souls screaming made me feel as if my eardrums were going to rupture. Even though their screams did not stop it seemed as if my ears began to get used to the pain. There seemed to be people not entering the gate and I could hear people asking them what lies ahead. I heard them answer, Satan's kingdom. I stood there for a while looking ahead past the souls of the damned. They all were marching towards what looked to be a city. It looked to be made of fire and brimstone. I joined the others and walked forth towards the city. The place shook as if there were massive earthquakes happening but I discovered it was something worse. Close nearby the city colossus-sized beings were roaming the fiery wasteland crushing and destroying anything in their path. I made sure to stay out of their way and I finally made it to what people called Satan's Kingdom, and it is a place I called home for a long time. The things I've done in hell. I've done a lot of bad things in my life so I knew this is where I belonged that I made money not in an average way. I scammed people and would from time to time steal from people just to be able to support myself because it was hard to get even a little bit of cash. When I entered the inferno I entered the city of the damned also known as Satan's kingdom. In a place ruled by hell's creatures, you have to learn how to survive quickly and how to protect yourself. I lived in hell for four centuries. I know that seems like a lot of time which it is but hell is a lot weirder than anyone could think. You don't get bored or go insane. The place seems to have a mind of its own. It constantly wants you to be afraid and in pain, so the last thing it wants from you is to forget the feeling of torment. This made being there worse. When I first entered the city I expected to be taken away forced into a place to forever be tortured but it was different. 
The city of the damned is a place full of creatures living in hell and normal people. Not normal in the sense of being civilized. The most civilized thing you can encounter in hell is someone not bashing someone else's head in. I questioned why people would hurt each other if there was no one trying to hurt us besides the hell creatures walking around. Why would we attack each other for eternity making our new lives torture in this fiery wasteland? I found out why quickly. In hell, there is a kill ranking system for a certain number of people you kill the higher you rank up making you stronger. Randomly after killing any number of people you have the chance for your body to kind of mutate. This would allow you to be able to fight easier or make your stay in hell easier. We don't just kill to get stronger, we kill because killing is freedom. Every kill gives the people of hell relief because they are closer to their goal. That goal is the ability to be reincarnated and to live a happy life on earth. Instead of spending eternity in pain and suffering. When you hit that certain amount of kills you get a deal. Stay in hell and help rule or reincarnate. The person who gives you this deal is a god. No, not the devil because in the world there is a god but he is not a god of love but the opposite. Once I found out about this I learned to fight and how to become a killing machine. My goal was reincarnation. In hell everyone is all around the same age usually in their 20s I believe it's to help people fight. I know it seems weird that hell would do this but I believe it's to make it so everyone has the chance to fight because that's what the place craves. It took me a couple of years there to learn to fight. I died countless times. Every time I'd die I would wake up at those gates and be forced to walk back into the city. You do not need food in hell which causes people to be irritated because we still have the feeling of hunger. Starvation can make people go crazy. I've seen people cannibalize to try to stop the endless feeling of hunger. I am ashamed to say that I tried it once before. There are no rules in hell, no punishments because being there is the punishment. Which means there is no judgment for the things you do. No one to tell you right from wrong. Due to me being only 5 inch 5, I am good at being silent and unnoticed. In a place full of pain and people looking out to kill for the power it helped me out a lot. There are groups in hell for example murderers. People that were already good at killing before getting here have it easier than more than half of the people who arrive here. No matter what everyone comes here and with their knowledge, they group up with people like them to slaughter countless people for fun. Not to come back to live again, just to cause pain. The only way to reincarnate is to kill so I joined one of these groups. I helped kill hundreds of people I learned to use my size as an advantage and used it to sneak up on people and attack them. After maybe 20 something years there I mutated. I had gained the ability to climb walls and I'll tell you this mutating is not something you can't feel. You feel as if your whole body is on fire from the inside. I can tell you this it hurts like a bitch but in this place, I have experienced worst. The ability to climb walls helped me be sneakier in the city I could catch people looking to hide off guard and attack. This gave me the nickname Spider. I was known around the city of the damned. My new skills helped me slaughter hundreds of people. I feel bad and I don't at the same time because there is no right or wrong because we are all striving for the same goal. In hell you have to embrace the inferno you are thrown into. You learn to accept the things you have done and adapt to the world you are thrown into. I learned to enjoy my work and embraced the name, Spider, and the act of killing. I challenged myself to become better depending on the person I'd try not to use a weapon like a sharp stone and stuff. I used my fists to attack my enemies, mastering the way of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I am not proud of the things I have done in hell but it was the only way I could escape. I've walked through the valley of death, I don't fear its evil. In my time in hell, I've walked through the valley of death and I don't fear its evil, I embrace it. A scary thing about hell is how much it opens your eyes. Views on life can change in the matter of an instance, you learn that you should value your own life over others. People refuse to believe this but I do. There is only hell, there are no golden gates. Let me tell you about the people of hell. Hell consists of people of all sorts, murderers, 
thieves, and anything in between. People you may not even suspect. People of religious belief, people that believe in there that there is a God and that if they stay on the path of faith they will be saved. Some people even believe that hell is the ultimate test of faith and that if they take what hell throws at them that they will be saved. There are no gates waiting for us. There is no holy God, a God that loves his children and would do no harm to them. Hell is a place that messes with your mind most of all. It causes mental pain to the people in it. As I said before some people believe hell is a test of faith. I truly believe it's not. I've seen people do horrible things in the name of their Lord. A lot of people believe in self-punishment. People will inflict pain on themselves to try to shower their God they are true to them and they will not sin. These people are scarier I find than even the murderers of hell and the monsters themselves. I talked before how hell has creatures that roam around slaughtering anything in their way but there is one I find most intriguing. This monster is the embodiment of gluttony. It's massive, as tall as a three-story building, its stomach doesn't stop eating. The people of hell call him gluttony. I know that sounds cliché but that's what we all refer to him as. Gluttony doesn't need to go out and hurt people, people come to him. I'd call that crazy but I think the world I'm in is the embodiment of crazy. The real extremists that believe in self-punishment feed themselves to the creature every single day. You guys might be wanting a detailed explanation of what gluttony looks like. As I said before he is the size of a three-story building and he never moves from his spot. He appears to look human but his skin is all cracked and dyed by the red acidic rain falling from the sky. His face is deformed and one of the eyes is greatly smaller than the others making it harder for him to see. He has multiple rolls rolling down his stomach and the creature has no genitalia from what I could tell. He sat with his legs crossed most of the time as if he was giant babysitting on the floor. That's all I can really remember living there for four centuries. You tend to forget a lot of stuff that happened surprisingly. Gluttony's area was the best place to take the lives of others. The people there wouldn't tend to fight back but if Gluttony caught you taking the lives of the people before him he would attack you. I lost my life countless times to him. Luckily due to the fact that he has trouble seeing it made it easy to sneak past him. The area was a slaughter fest. It was as if it was a valley of death and I embraced it. It helped me take countless lives helping me mutate a couple of times. It hurt like a bitch felt like every mutation hurt more than the last. But the abilities I gained helped me massively. I was very lucky in hell. I got some of the best mutations. Some people would think this is gross but let me tell you the things in hell are a lot worse so you learn to get used to the weird and you don't complain about what you get because you wouldn't be better off without whatever you get. I gained the ability for my spit to become extremely sticky. I also could spit far. I would be able to trap the people walking to gluttony and kill them myself. Another mutation I got also involved my mouth. I gained razor sharp teeth so when people were in my traps I could tear through their flesh not only satisfying my lust for death but also moving higher on the death rankings. I'm starting to think the demons people believe in are just us. People who are trapped in hell and we become demons ourselves. Maybe the monsters we see are just people like us who have chosen to stay in the darkness. There are things far worse than death in hell. O oh Lord deliver us salvation from this eternal inferno, O oh Lord give us the strength to move on in this eternal darkness and allow us the ability to not lose faith in Thee O oh Lord. Bull crap like that is what you will hear in hell. People praying to their false gods in hope of salvation and freedom from the eternal darkness we all eventually get plunged into. These people you will find in camps in hell. When I say camp I don't mean pitch a tent, set up a fire and drink your sorrows away or even just enjoy the night sky. Imagine a refugee camp full of religious nuts who sit around all day babbling to themselves how whatever is going on can't be real or people trying to convince other people that whatever is going on is just a test of faith and that God will deliver us from this eternal inferno. These camps never really last long, they are known to only last maybe 20-ish years. I stayed in a couple of them. 
They aren't that bad if you ignore the nutcases. Let me give you guys a detailed explanation of what these places look like. Hell is scattered with the bones of the people that fall victim to the inferno. People use skin and bones to build tent-like buildings for people to sleep in. I know it's strange to think that there are people sleeping next to each other in hell but it's honestly true. I was surprised, but I didn't really care because a bed is a rare thing in hell. Don't take beds for granted because in hell we don't have fluffy soft comforters. Our beds if we are lucky to have one are made of stretched skin being held together by rocks and bones. Tied together with hair. I know it sounds horrible but it's better than sitting in puddles of blood and the burning rock that scatters the floor of the camps. I spent many years hopping from camp to camp, sometimes picking off people in their sleep. I sadly stopped going to these camps because I learned something grim about these places. Hell is a place of endless torment and pain and there is no way that it will allow people to try to live normal lives. Hell deals with these places by sending the unthinkable to these places. You might be curious about what hell sends. I thought of the creatures to be rumors, maybe just something someone made up to scare people and keep them in constant fear but no I saw them. People refer to the creatures as hell hounds. This is not because they look like dogs but because they are the loyal beasts of hell. They are sort of like shapeshifters. They take the form of whatever your greatest fear is when I first encountered one of these creatures when they attacked the camp I was staying in. I was sleeping with one of the girls I decided to hook up with while I was there until I heard the sounds of screeching and the sounds of people scrambling to their feet. I stepped outside the tent I was sleeping in to see these shadow-type creatures moving towards all of us in the camp. One pushed me to the ground and began to take shape of a massive spider I screamed in terror one of the friends I made knocked the creature off of me. Me and him tried to run but I knew we wouldn't be able to get away. I did what I had to do. Hell is a place where you should trust no one. I knocked my friend off his feet to slow the creature down. I watched as it lifted him into the air taking the shape of a zombie. It sucked his soul through his body. The lights shot from the creature's eyes and my friend dropped and went limp. I managed to escape and hide under some rocks and watched as the creatures took shape of everyone's worst fears, I watched as they took their souls from their bodies. I sat there and cried realizing what I had done. In hell, Killing isn't so bad because everyone just comes back and still has a chance to reincarnate but I just caused someone's existence to vanish, never to be able to come back. In hell there are things far worse than death, the fact that we die and come back die and come back is horrifying but you don't realize how scary it is when you discover one day you might not. The Trials of the Inferno PT1 Milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years, decades, and centuries fly by in the pit. The concept of time can be lost due to the fact you are always kept busy day in day out, night after night. To be honest I said I was in the inferno for around four centuries but that's just my guess. Who knows how time really works there. All I could keep my mind on once I discovered the possibility of permanent sleep was how to get out of the infernal cage, or contemplating to myself if I should let the creatures of hell take my soul to find peace in this eternal damnation. I think it's about time I really tell you about the inferno. The worst things I had to endure and do to come back. To warn and tell everyone my story even if they believe it or not. Call me crazy. I don't care but don't plan on making friends with me when we all eventually get sent back. Honestly, the Bible is a load of crap for years. I had the same quotes going through my head day in and day out. Isaiah 41 verse 13, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Matthew 5 verses 3 to 4, God blesses those who realize their need for Him, and who mourn will be comforted. Someone tell me where we can help. When were we comforted besides for when we took the lives of one another knowing that we will have peace for a little while until we stumble upon another foe? Who was there to take hold of my right hand telling me not to fear? No one came to my rescue. I sat there for years praying up to the crimson sky begging to be saved but no one came. 
I took my own hand and saved myself so I can live my life with slight comfort now. I recommend you do the same. The inferno is like a flame it burns turning anything it touches transforming everything and anything in its way into ash. The inferno burns our hearts, taking away any love or compassion we felt towards others, turning it into ash in our hearts, releasing us, making all of us rely on our certain emotions, like anger. This forces us to lean towards our animal instincts like a crutch or a cane to the blind. When I accepted all these things completely that's when he appeared the ruler of the inferno. He came to me in a shadow-like form and explained to me I was now a candidate for the trials. He explained to me the things I would undergo and have to do. These trials consisted of challenges of harming others rather than myself. I don't mean when I say to harm others the residents of hell, I mean living people. You see when people reincarnate or come back to life the devil gives some of us a list of things to do as sort of favor for him but one you definitely shouldn't refuse. If you go through places like the dark web or deep web you can find thousands of pages on devil worshipping and demon summonings. As most of them are face some of them not so much. Most people when they return are told to spread the word of summonings. What these rituals would have you do would be to take the life of another on an altar of some sort in hope of gaining some power from the Dark One himself but what people don't realize when they complete this ritual they are signing away the rest of the life they have left to the Dark Lord. As a participant of the trials, I would be forced to take over the lives of these people and spread chaos. Shootings, drivabies, terrorist attacks are some of the things you can expect to do when you are partaking in these trials. The worst part about them is that when these people die you know what you are sending them to. Right down below into the land of the dead, where they will be forced to live out eternity there or rise and fight to return. After controlling a person, everything gets hazy and it's hard to remember what you did but there is one thing you can never forget. Something that goes completely unnoticed for long-time residents of the Abyss the Screams.